Captain Chawla started his career at sea and spent over 30 years at Anglo Eastern, where he served as managing director for QHSE and training. Today, he brings his vast experience to Marine Pels, a platform that is reshaping the way maritime training is delivered. Captain Chawla, it's a real honor to have you with us today. Uh, thank you for taking the time to speak with us and share your insights. Thank you for having me here. Let's hear directly from Captain Chawla. What is Marine Pels and what makes it different? I was getting a bit frustrated that youngsters do not like to read anymore. So anything that was more than four pages long typically did not get read. The second thing that I observed was that they were pretty much hooked to their mobile phones. So research led us to three areas, three pillars, which is the three pillars for Marine Pals now. Micro learning, we found was that the one minute video is great for reminding people about something. We were also seeing a lot of interest in gaming apps. So we ended up making a game where we identify port state control deficiencies from photographs. And the third one was virtual reality. So that gave us the idea that why not we make people walk through the tanks because we can't make them do that uh, when they are in college. With these three pillars, the Marine Pals platform started building out. And of course, now we have a lot more on assessments and a lot more other modules that we have, which the industry needs. Many shipping companies still rely on traditional training methods. Uh, what would you say to decision makers considering to switch to digital learning? So skepticism comes from is a normal phenomena. I mean, I think in, in all industries, uh, even whether you take the rail industry with trains that don't really run very well, and uh, or you take, uh, you know, aeroplanes that still look the same as they look in 1970s. Uh, people in decision making are generally driven more by what's the most cost effective way of doing something rather than what's the zaniest way of doing something. You know, what's cool, they don't really care, but what's uh, cost effective, they do care. So digital learning has become now something that people are accepting that, yes, we do save money too. I mean, getting people into a classroom involved flights, hotels, and time off from their leave in the shipping industry. We managed to change that with the saying, okay, you can be at home, but just give us one hour of your time to do a webinar. And that kind of moved the needle towards digital learning. Captain Chawla, how can fleet uh, a crew manager track progress and ensure that crew is uh, truly benefiting from this training? Uh, digital learning changes that in a significant way because now we can assess people with application of knowledge in the real world. I'll give you two examples. One is like, okay, all the knowledge that I have about regulations is meant to be for running the ship properly. And one of that running the ship properly means that when a port state control inspector comes on board, my ship will not have any deficiencies because I'm maintaining it as per the regulations and I'm loading and discharging the cargo as per the laws. Now, in the old days, this would be an examination in a short course called Port State Control course. Now, how do we assess that? We give them pictures of the deficiencies on a mobile app, and they have to look through and fight against time because that's how the real world is. You, the PSC inspector comes on board for six hours or eight hours, and he finds these defects which the seafarer should have found and could have had an answer or should have solved the problem. So now we have given him an assessment tool or a, or a learning tool whereby they train their eyes to finding the defects as they walk around on a ship like they would in the real world. So it completely changes the paradigm of what is assessment. That digital learning can do that. You could do that with a mentor inspector or a captain guiding the third officer along on the ship and saying, you see, that's a defect out there. Uh, so digital learning makes that possible. We have another example of that in our virtual reality training where we actually make the person walk through inside of a tank. And now rather than asking them to do a 3D sketch to show 
what is the four peak tank of a ship what are the strengthening members for that we would have to ask them to draw a four peak tank sketch and we would have to ask some questions about what's a transverse web what's you know why are there lightning holes in the bulkheads etc now what do we do we put them we give them glasses or on a mobile app and we give them the 360 degree view and say okay can you now walk around in this tank virtually and point out to me where is the lightning hole or which one is the transverse web? Which technologies will drive the future of maritime training? Do you see AI playing a bigger role here? AI will play a big role in all our, in all our lives, never mind what profession we are in. I mean, already now with the Microsoft Copilot and things like that, and you know, AI is being introduced in practically every aspect uh, Amazon has it, Microsoft for our Word, uh, extra uh, Word and Excel, et cetera. We have that. It summarizes things. It makes our productivity better. So the student of the future, the biggest skill that they will need to learn is to be able to identify which knowledge is believable and which one is not believable. Captain Chawla, um, if a shipping company is interested in marine pels, uh, what is the next step? Well, give them my telephone number to start with and my email. But uh, basically, companies that are willing to have an open mind towards using different tools. And I say marine pals is one of the tools for learning and development, but a very powerful tool that be open minded to it. As an example, we built a virtual reality digital twin for the bunkering station of an LNG fueled ship. Now, the problem statement was it was a car carrier. These guys have not carried LNG as a cargo ever in their lives. They don't even know the properties of LNG or the dangers of LNG. So how do we train these people before they go on board? And it's not really expensive, you know, one of the things that People say when it is digital learning, oh, this is going to cost us more. It actually brings down the cost of training per student in a big way. No more hotels, no more flights and various methods of delivery. I mean, we do everything on their mobile phones or on a web application, right? The question that comes to my mind is how to attract more people to the seafarer industry and how to retain good people as well. We were taking 480 cadets a year we got 22,000 applications per year. So, and if we wanted to, we could have got 50,000 applications. It was just that the recruitment team could not handle more than 20,000 applications a year. And hence we would kind of put a stop on it on a certain date to prevent that to going to 50,000. What attracts people out to see? One is the fundamental urge to do something that gives them an exposure to the world. It is still a good attraction. But the one factor that makes shipping very different from any other industry is the sense of responsibility that we can give to an 18 year old. So by the time they're 21, they are a third officer or a fourth engineer and telling people that at the age of 21, you're going to be in charge, literally in charge and in midnight watch to 4 a.m. watch as a second officer or third officer and you're going to be handling a $200 million asset with a cargo of probably 200 million more on it. And this is all going to be under you and you're going to be the navigator of this one. That does thrill people. Having gone through many training programs myself, I find Marine Pals concept uh, both compelling and logical. The idea of using VR, gamification, micro learning to make training more engaging just makes more sense. Personally, I enjoy participating in such interactive sessions, and I can imagine that companies adopting these modern training techniques will not only improve crew performance, but also become more attractive to employees. So, for anyone interested in learning more about Marine Pulse and their approach, here's a website, marinepulse.com. Thank you for listening.